Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 12. It's on E equals mc squared. This is maybe the most famous equation in all of physics. It was developed by Albert Einstein in 1905. And what it really shows is energy mass equivalence. In other words, that energy can be converted into mass and mass can be converted back into energy. And this equation tells us how much energy is going to be released in that process. And so there are a couple of conservation rules that you're probably familiar with. Number one is the conservation of mass. And so if I take a piece of wood, for example, and chop it in half, the mass of those two pieces is equal to the mass of the original piece of wood. But if I burn that wood, I'm going to create a lot of things like water, I'm going to create carbon dioxide, but the mass of all of that is going to be equal to the wood itself as, as well. So we can't create or destroy matter. Um, there's also a rule of conservation of energy. So the energy in that wood used to be energy inside a tree, used to be energy in the sun um, that was delivered to the tree through photosynthesis, but we don't create energy, we don't destroy it. But what we learned in the last century is that mass can be converted into energy and uh, energy can be converted back into mass. And so we've kind of adjusted that conservation rule and it's the conservation of mass energy. And we refer to those as the same thing. Mass is energy. Energy is mass. They're essentially the same thing. And this equation allows us to see how we can convert between the two. And so the three things in this equation are energy, mass, and then the speed of light. So if I want to figure out how much energy is in matter, I can just multiply it times the speed of light squared. And so what is the speed of light? Well, it's a really large number. And if I square a really large number, I get an even larger number. And so there's a huge amount of energy locked in a small amount of matter. And so Einstein realized this and led to things like uh, atomic bombs and nuclear energy. And so uh, let me give you a couple examples of this conversion of mass to energy. And so let's start with carbon-12. And that's what we base our uh, atomic mass unit on. In other words, how do we define an atomic mass unit? It's essentially 1 12th the mass of carbon-12. And so the mass of carbon-12 is 12.000 atomic mass units. It's the standard. But let's say I deconstruct, I take all those protons, neutrons, and electrons apart, and then we mass them individually. Well, you would think conservation of mass is going to be the same thing, but let's do that. Let's break apart those electrons. They have a mass of 0 0.00548 atomic mass units. If I multiply that times the six electrons, this is the total mass of electrons. I could do the same thing for the protons and the neutrons that I have. And then if I add all of these up, I get a number that is larger than the number I had before. In other words, if you break apart an atom, if you break it into its constituent parts, it actually has more mass divided than it did when it was all together. And so where did the mass come from? And where will the mass go when we convert it back into that atom? Well, it's used in the binding energy of the atom itself. And so when we convert that back into carbon-12 again, that mass is gone, but it's been converted into energy that is holding that atom together. Another place we could see that would be in a uh, particle accelerator. And so uh, the Large Hadron Collider is, collider is really large. It's 17 miles around. And so what they're doing is accelerating protons, and they're going much faster than this. And so this proton takes one second to move around, and the Large Hadron Collider, it's going to go around in one second 11,000 times. And so it's approaching the speed of light. It's like three meters per second less than the speed of light, but it'll never get to the speed of light. Why is that? Well, as the proton is moving, if we want to accelerate it, we have to put energy into it, and a lot of that energy ends up being converted into mass. And so the proton gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And eventually, it would move towards infinite mass, and we would require infinite energy to speed it. Uh, to the speed of light. And so that's kind of a universal speed limit. And so again, in this case, we're converting energy into mass. They're convertible. And so we could use this equation to figure out how much energy it's going to take. And, and the math is very, very simple. Let's say I had um, a certain amount of uranium. So we have five kilograms of uranium-235. And I want to see how much energy is in that. Well, we're going to be able to solve for energy in joules just using the mass of that uranium times the speed of light squared. Now, it would be the same amount of energy in five kilograms of U. It doesn't matter what the matter is. There's going to be energy inside it. And so I set up the equation like this, and then I just plug in my values. And so we're putting five kilograms in here. 
the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Again, I have to square that, and so I get an incredibly large number of joules. We could convert that into watts if we wanted to figure out how long we could light a light bulb for, and what you would find is this small amount of uranium would be able to light a light bulb for millions and millions of years. And so there's a huge amount of energy locked in that matter. Now obviously we'd lose energy, there'd be energy loss along the way, but it's a really, really large number. And so did you learn why the theory of conservation of mass was replaced by the theory of conservation of mass energy? It's because mass can be converted into energy and vice versa, and I hope that was helpful.